today we will be looking at the proportions of our bread van homage. Hi guys, welcome to a new video on car design for coach building and specifically in this case our bread van homage. Please do have a look at every video on this topic, on this bread van homage that I made before. You'll have a look at the hard points going through this with also the technical team, the coach builder, the client, taking the car apart, seeing what we can work with, putting that into ideation sketches for both interior and exterior. And now we're at the point where we're going to actually develop all this work, develop all the ideation sketches into more finalized renderings. Let's do a quick recap. This is the base car and let's have a look at what we can do with that within the same proportions because car designers look in three different steps at cars. Proportions, 10 meters of distance, surfacing about a meter of distance and then jewelry about 10 centimeters of distance. So these three steps I'll talk you through today and this is the first overview as you can see based on the front view of the OEM car. And what you can see is these way more narrow headlights which do not flow into the fender anymore. They are more narrow here as well so we have more space for these very sculptural and three dimensional air intakes. There's this bonnet scoop here very softly sculpted into the bonnet and this opening that will make you see the v12 engine very nicely and then all graphics line up with each other in the previous video i've discussed why that is the case and we basically do it just to make the car look a bit more consistent a bit more as one sculpture rather than different elements added up together so the same can be said for the side this was the base vehicle and these are a selection of sketches of the side views so you can have a good look at the proportion and what it does for instance have a look at the point here so the headlight is getting into the fender there still as with the original design then we have graphics there and there that are changing the wheels are very different on this car but also smaller things like the rake there so i'll delete it all let's have a look at the rake of the b pillar so just that specific line there and how it runs a little bit more in a curve let's say like that i'm over exaggerating now obviously in this sketch compared to this sketch you can see it doesn't line up with these arrows anymore different subtleties in the design some are more obvious like the vents here on top these are replicated over there and in, in this case they're more up straight generating a nicely strong b pillar and then that flow is replicated over there in a large air vent running around like that with three-dimensional surfacing and this in the end is the final design with some last little tweaks light catchers that run through the wheel for instance detached graphic there in some of the sketches you can see that graphic was lining up even with these tiny little lines here you can see it was lining up the reason why we haven't done that in the final design is sometimes things look great on paper or on the screen but in real life we made a clay model and i'll talk you through the clay model in another video in real life it just didn't look that good so this is an iterative process we're going three steps forward and one step back three steps forward one step back sometimes three steps back even it is together with this uh, clay modeling or 3d cat modeling depending on the project that the project grows towards a real car it's not just making sketches stopping the sketches and then going in 3d or going into clay the process is a bit liquid around the edges you could say so we flow back and forward between the different stages of the project regardless this is something very close to the final car and let's have a good look at the rear end as well because we can basically do a similar design exercise there if you haven't seen that video in the beginning where we had a look uh, through the car and you see all the hard points for instance we take the boot lid off we take the tail lights off the bumper we see all different elements that we worked with one of the ideation phase sketches was something like this so this is a design more evolved from uh, the ideation sketches with a graphic of tail lights that are flowing with the fender there so under an angle meaning that perhaps it's a bit less wide visually here uh, because obviously the tail light is pushed in but the the graphics are flowing nicely together the graphics of the tail lights and of the outline of this facet here 
There is no right or wrong here necessarily. It's really just a search for what it is that looks good, uh, what it is that looks interesting. Uh, what if we move the number plate emboss upwards from the surface area there where it was with the original car and just do something more fresh, perhaps a bit more original, a very three-dimensional. So there's no chrome element you see on many cars, but this is just coming from pushing the surface in a bit and you can see there's like a, a drop shadow there but there's only surfacing there only skin really try to do it in a minimalistic way and you can see the graphics uh, lining up nicely that area and the area is on the same height level that means the design just looks in three dimensions if you look from left to right a bit more consistent so here you see the element going to the bottom of the car and you see it lines up actually quite nicely with the glass and this is all done very deliberately to create graphics to create a volume to create surfacing that all work together. Here the tips are coming out of the car, one graphic with two pipes, and here you see a very different take where the pipes are moved upwards and each of them have their own opening. And this generates quite interesting muscular shapes around these tail pipes, a very three-dimensional facet with a lot of light being catched by the light catchers there, also here on top of the number plate. And then here you've got very deep shadows because that rear end is being pushed inwards quite a bit. Here a car that looks a lot wider. Well, why is that? It's not wider at all. You can see the outline of the car stays exactly the same. And just to show you how much the graphics and the placement of the graphic within the car makes a difference. Here the shoulder line drops a bit less. So seeing in, in side view, if we have, let's say, uh, the wheel here, this shoulder line stays up rather than running like that so this depth it doesn't have and the previous sketch did have that so have a look there so this fender basically runs a bit more like that and then if we get this one this is a lot flatter meaning that the car perhaps looks a bit more active a bit more up straight and let's go to the next version uh, that full glass rear end of which we said okay it looks very interesting but let's skip it because it just pushes it too hard and it's an interesting design but perhaps not a bread fan anymore so here we go towards the final design you can see these white lines where i indicate also to our client how things line up and here with the tail pipes and the end of the lights here we're still experimenting with are we gonna have that flow of the facet here there's a there's a double facet so this is the outside facet then this is like an inside facet a light catcher and then here there's another facet that breaks that surface area so from the bottom of the glass towards the top of the inside facet and it breaks it exactly in the middle the heart of the tail lights it does that to make the car look more horizontal that's why this is lined up with the middle of the tail lights and then the bottom of the glass area you can really see there's one horizontal line going through that whole car which seen from the rear end makes it look even wider than it is because your eyes are drawn from the outer point there to the outer point there reading the sides of the car as actually the the back end of the car so visually it looks a lot wider and what we're experimenting with here is for instance the position of the tail lights relative to the tips of the exhaust so here you can see what that does to the car if they're up straight exactly vertical above each other it just gives another new dynamic to the car it looks a bit more up straight but also perhaps a bit wider because visually this is the end of the car and it doesn't push out there what it does generate is a surface area around the tail lights there that is bigger than it is here here obviously it's a bit pinching because of yeah it basically touches the inside facet there so all these things we have to take into consideration it shouldn't pinch it should not look too heavy it shouldn't look uh, too high it should look wide enough so it has a decent stance and here you can see it coming up so what we've done and this is basically a redesign based on the clay model the surface area here underneath the tail light uh, which on the sketch looked quite nice in the clay model just looked uh, very very big and it's because of the angle of you looking at that car uh, the car is so low that you're looking on it you, you're looking on the roof and then if you cannot see the design elements that are going on there because you're looking so much on top of it standing next to the car then you really have to change the car change in a way the perspective of how the human eye sees the car 
This is very much like the Romans built their temples. Perhaps you know the temples. Let me just uh, simplify that with a very, very quick drawing. These, uh, these temples, they were made for the human uh, that was standing underneath them here. So the human eye was looking upwards. The perspective of the columns was made in such a way that it looked like they were straight, but they were all actually a bit crooked because of the perspective that was basically cancelled out with that design. What we're doing here is basically the same. So we're cancelling out certain things that are caused by perspectives. So we're forcing in a way the, the perspective, if you like, into a certain direction. So, so the car looks like it does on the sketch, but actually, factually, it is not like the sketch. I hope that that makes sense. You see it, there's quite a significant difference in the height. You have some extra light catchers here as well that were added because of the clay model. You see very three-dimensional openings here as if they were really pushed through and the metal was sort of pushed outwards and upwards. And that's really something that the coach builder will make. Initial ideas are still there. So the graphics lining up, facets making the car look more horizontal. Again, this facet was also kept to break this surface area and altogether I think it works pretty well and it's a, an interesting piece of modern car design without sort of being burdened by the past we've tried together to make a homage and ode to the original to original cars from the 60s as well but not being limited by it in our creativity so thank you for watching this video on the proportion of the Brad Van Homage now you know everything about the proportions in car design. Just getting the aesthetics of a car right is highly complex. Please join us again next week for a video on the surfacing, the skin of the Brad Van Homage. And that is, I can tell you, equally complex. Just like the proportions, everything is linked together. I'd very much appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also hit the bell to be notified on a new video coming out. And then last but not least, leave a comment, let us know what you think about the Brad Van Homage.